Welcome, everyone. Give yourselves an applause for making it on a, what is it, a Tuesday night, I think. I lose track of time. Welcome, and I should be calling you wicked sinners. We are, of course, in the third in the series of uh, the Seven Deadly Sins series at the RIOs. Welcome. Um, I'm Natasha Mitchell. As Kieran explained, I'm from ABC Radio National. I host our national program called All in the Mind, which is about all this sort of head stuff. And just to let you know, we are, with the help of Andrea from the ABC, recording tonight's session for us as well. So keep that in mind. Look, so far in this series of events for the RIOs, we've had greed, we've had wrath, and tonight uh, is possibly the most destructive sin of all, and that is envy. Although I guess it could be argued that envy has a, a sort of motivating force in our lives, doesn't it, to an extent? It's a little bit of competition doesn't go astray. So envy is the topic, topic and whatever we think of envy, um, it's certainly the driving force behind some of the purchasing choices we make, <coughs> keeping up with the Joneses, that sort of thing. Um, and it's certainly a driving force uh, behind what companies exploit to make us want to spend our hard-earned cash on their products. So envy it is. We're going to discuss the rise and rise of a very interesting field called neuromarketing. Brain scans are already helping companies probe our buying desires and preferences as, con as consumers, believe it or not, and also to measure the success of marketing and advertising campaigns. So what we want to discuss tonight is what are the opportunities for this technology? What's the scientific basis of neuromarketing? Is the science ripe enough to be used like this or have we been somewhat seduced by the bright lights of the brain scan? And what about the ethical questions here too? Do we want brain scans uh, probing our inner lives in this way? So that's, that's what we're here to discuss. We've got a super panel of scientific entrepreneurs tonight, I have to say. All of them have been entrepreneurs at one point in their life. Beaming in from Canada. Can we see him on the screen? I don't think we can. We've got Peter Reiner. Professor Peter Reiner, welcome. Let's give him a round of applause. Hi, Peter. Um, in this room, I am actually underneath your chin. <laughs> the panel are looking up at you. Um, we're very privileged to have Professor Peter Reiner with us from the University of British Columbia. It is 1am in the morning his time, so thank you. Another round of applause. <laughs> Peter's had a long and distinguished career as a research neuroscientist. He, he took time out from that career to become president and CEO of a drug discovery company that he founded focused on Alzheimer's disease. Um, now he's back in academia as professor in what's called the National Core for Neuroethics program at UBC, which is really one of the world's leading programs to engage with the ethics of the rapid development of the brain sciences. Um, and so he's really concerned with some of the ethical questions of his own field. And he's uh, joining us in replacement of his colleague, Professor Judy Illis. So thanks, thanks Peter, for being here. Also no a Canadian, we've got Dr Shane Moon. He's managing director of a Melbourne-based uh, company with the alluring title, it has to be said, called Inner Truth, described as a neuromarket research agency. Um, Shane was a clinical psychologist, has worked as a sports psychologist with Olympians, has worked as a forensic psychologist in a maximum security prison, has squeezed in more than a few triathlons, believe it or not, and in recent years his focus has been very much on consumer behaviour, um, marketing and now neuromarketing, working al alongside some of Australia's leading advertising agencies and a number of ASX companies on um, marketing and communication strategies. So welcome Shane. Thank you. Good to be here. And tonight, he's our resident cyborg. And we'll come to that in a moment. Dr Phil Harris is a lecturer in the Department of Management and Marketing at the University of Melbourne, where he teaches neuromarketing courses, amongst other things. And in fact, he thinks it's probably the first neuromarketing university course in the world. He hasn't found another one, have we you? We believe so. We believe so. And about to go not just undergraduate commerce. Postgraduate but starts this year as well. Fantastic. Um, you also have been an entrepreneur. You got involved in a neuromarketing company after your PhD. Um, Phil did his PhD at the Brain Sciences Institute at Swinburne University. 
uh, of technology. And now, though, back in academia, his research draws on cognitive neuroscience and marketing to explore the biological basis of consumer behaviour. And he's uh, directed commercial research projects in Australia and overseas with all sorts of players, including General Motors and Nestle. So welcome, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. And in fact, Phil's going to kick us off. Tonight is very much interactive. We've got um, roving mics. We're going to build you into the conversation along the way, but we'll kick off with a bit of a discussion. And before we do that, uh, Phil's going to give us a presentation to give you some context about this um, field of neuromarketing that some of you may have heard of but aren't sure what it's quite about. It's all a bit mysterious. Thanks, Phil.